hey guys welcome to channel dev kage so in this video we will take a look at a widget called value listenable builder the main purpose of this widget is to provide you a way to optimize your apps and avoid unnecessary rebuilds of the whole widget tree to understand how exactly this works i'll first show a simple case where unnecessary rebuilds of widget tree happens unknowingly and then i'll show you how value listenable builder can help us optimize the rebuilds so first let's get rid of this text widget I want to return a container as child of this center widget. For that, I'll call getContainer method. Now let's define this method. It will simply return a container with its color property set to blue and width and height set to 300. If I save this code, you'll see a blue square in the app. I want to rotate this container about its center using a button. So for that, I'll add a floating action button to this scaffold. Let's keep the onPressed function blank for now and set its style property as a rotate right icon. Okay, so now we have a button to control the rotation. Now to rotate the square, we will need a variable which will store the angle of rotation. I'll call this rot and initialize it with zero. Next, I'll remove the get container call from here and add a transform widget. I'll use the dot rotate named constructor of this widget. Let's set the child property for this transform as get container. The angle property needs angle in radians. As I'll use rot as angle in degrees, we will have to convert it to radians. For this, I'll multiply it by pi and divide it by 180. For pi, I'll have to import Dart's math package. Now, in the on pressed of floating action button, I'll increase value of rot by 30 every time the button is pressed. And since rotation value more than 180 will not make any sense, I'll reset it to 0 if it exceeds 180. Finally, we will have to put this whole thing in a set state call to actually see the transformation. And as you can see, the square rotates when I press floating action button. Now to show you that the whole widget tree is getting rebuilt every time we press that button, I'll set a breakpoint in the getContainer method. And if I rotate the container again, this breakpoint will get hit. Now this might not seem like a major issue at first look, but if you think over it a little, you'll notice that there is no real reason to rebuild the container every time because all that we are doing is rotating the container. Why can't Flutter just call get container once to get that container and keep on rotating the same container again and again? So you might say this is happening because I have called get container from transform widget. But even if I call the get container at start of build method and pass it to transform widget, nothing will change. It will still generate a new container every time we rotate the container. And this is happening because of set state call. It basically rebuilds everything by calling the build method and all this code gets executed again and again. For this app, it will not show any performance impact, but imagine the case where getContainer actually returns a much more complex widget with hundreds of sub-widgets. It will definitely show a performance impact in that case. So let's see how value listenable builder can solve this problem. For that, first I'll cut this transform widget and add a value listenable builder here. I'll set getContainer as the child for this widget. Next, we need to tell this widget which object it should listen to. For that, I'll make rot variable an object of value notifier. I'll set its initial value as 0. Now, we can set this object as value listenable property of value listenable builder. Next, let's define the builder function for this widget. This builder needs three parameters, context, value and an optional widget. The value parameter right now is int. This is because the value listenable object right now holds an integer. If I change the initial value of rot from 0 to a string, the value parameter for builder will also change to a string. Basically, when this builder will get called, we will receive the current value of the listenable object. I'll name these three parameters as context, n and c. n being the value and c being the child widget. From this builder, I'll return the same transform widget as before. We will only have to set c as the child and instead of rot, we will have to use n, the current value of rot. Now, last thing is to make changes in the onPressed method. First, I'll remove this set state call and instead of changing rot, we will have to change rot.value at all these places. Let's save this code to see the changes. So now, if I press the floating action button, this container will still rotate the same way it did before. But let's see if breakpoint gets it inside getContainer. And as you can see, getContainer is not getting called when we rotate the container. This is because when we change the value of rot, it just calls the builder of value listenable builder. And here, we just rotate and return the input widget C. We are not trying to rebuild the widget. So if you put a breakpoint in the build method of this class, 
you can see that it does not get called when we try to rotate the container. And if I place a breakpoint in the builder function of value listenable builder, you'll see that it indeed gets called directly. So that was it for this video. In this way you can save rebuilds of the whole widget tree and optimize your app a little. Although I have shown a simple example with integer, you can extend similar logic to listen to an object of a custom class that you created. I'll put a link to the official documentation for this widget in description for your reference. Hope you enjoyed this video and were able to follow along. If not, you can always use the comment section to let me know your doubts. Also, all the code is available in the GitHub repository linked in the description. So if you like the video, give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing for more such content.